Hey guys, Coach Adam from TeamElitePhysique.com talking to you again today. It is that time of the year. It is time for my top 10 Olympia predictions in numerical order. This has been the hardest top 10 I have ever put together. It is probably the most inaccurate top 10 as well because there are so many variables that are going to go into this Olympia. We have 58 bikini girls on this list here. And I was up all night trying to figure out if you can see these scratches and checks and whatnot and trying to figure out the different scenarios of how people are going to be placing and why they'd be placing that way and how they did this year in different shows and who they beat and who that they didn't beat that beat someone else and trying to figure out all these scenarios. And I think I got it figured out. Okay. But I will, I could pretty much guarantee someone in these top 10 is wrong. Um, it'd be, I would be shocked if I got all the top 10 right. But maybe you're the one who's going to get the top 10 right, and I have a challenge for you. In the comments, leave who you think in numerical order who's going to be the top 10. If you get it right, if you get this top 10 right, we're going to send you, Team Elite Physique is going to send you a check for $2,500 to fund your season next year of competing and hopefully get you in a few shows. Um, I hope someone actually gets it. So leave it in the comments. Let's see it. I think it's going to be a fun challenge, a little Christmas bonus for everyone. Spend it however you want. <laughs> All right, but with that being said, let's jump into this crazy hardest Olympia for bikini that has ever been. This is the hardest one. Now, remember, this year it's the hardest Olympia because we had more months this year to qualify for the Olympia because of the, basically the COVID catch-up from the time frames of shows. So usually you have, you know, it's a 12-month calendar, you have about 10 months to qualify for the Olympia from after the Olympia to the next Olympia. This month, it was a 14-month difference. So there's a lot more people in it. We'll probably never see a Bikini Olympia this big again, this deep again. It is a monster. So before we go into the top 10, I wanted to go into last year's list and compare it with this year's list and talk about a couple of the top 10 people who are not going to be competing this year. So Lauren Denenmiller is not going to be competing this, at this year's Olympia. Jennifer Ronziti is not going to be competing at this year's Olympia. And who's not on the list here that you don't see in the top 10 that is going to be competing at this year's Olympia is the former Miss Bikini Olympia champion of 2021, Janet Leyu. Remember, she never lost her title. So this is going to be the first attempt back at potentially, if you want to call it defending her title, because she's never lost it. So um, remember, uh, Jennifer Dory did not beat Janet Leyu last year to get the title. So this is going to be two, basically two unbeaten champions defending their title, if you want to look at it that way. Um, some will argue that going into it. So let's see what this year's bring in. With that being said, let's jump into, I think, the top 10 are going to be. So in 10th place, I think Romina is going to round out that 10th spot. This 10th spot was a tough spot too, because I think that her and Ashlyn would have been fighting out for that 10th spot this year. This, again, could be totally wrong, um, but the way that Romina is looking right now, and Romina did just take out Ashlyn at the last show, but Ashlyn wasn't at her best at the last show, if you watched the last video before that. So this could be another battle for that, and Ashlyn, I think, can place as high as 8th place in this show, um, and same with Romina. But right now, I have her as 10th, just based on her last placing against Ashlyn, and also based not just on that, but the improvements that she's made year over year. She's a little fuller now. Her tie-ins are a little bit better. Her V-taper looks really great. Um, there's there's not too much to work on for Romina right now. I think that she's doing a great job. Um, I would just there's a couple very small things I think that she can work on to to probably come up a little bit. One, I'm not seeing her hair too good with the, with her. One, I'm not seeing her shoulders too good because her hair is covering them. I think that that just just that alone showing her overall width because she has this beautiful shoulder width, this tiny waistline, great V-taper, um, great great hips. And I think, you know, in today's bikini world, you have to show your, your your shoulders and show your shoulder width. That and her just leaning back just a little bit in this front pose, I think is going to be enough to, to make enough improvements and show her physique the best it can be and maybe even move up a little bit higher than that. Um, really great physique. As far as the physique goes, there's really not too much to work on. Her conditioning's there. Her fullness is there. Um, she shows it by beating a, a very tough competitor, Ashlyn, at the last one. So... We'll see what happens with this one, but I think for her, I think 10th place is where it's going to be. Okay, so the exciting, probably the most exciting one on this list right now due to the time is going to be for 9th place, okay? So 9th place is going to be a real battle, just as all there are going to be a real battle this year. But I think 9th place happens next weekend. And next weekend, where this battle is going to go down, where that 9th place is going to be determined, where we're going to see it happen live, is going to be in Texas between Phoebe Hagen and Deraja Hill. 
So this is going to be a real battle. And why do I think that this is happening with between these two? So first off, when you first see the list, you're going to say, why do you think Daraja is going to slip so many spots? And well, first off, I don't think it's a it's a big slip. I don't think anyone losing a couple spots at this year's Olympia is going to be a surprise. It is going to be a really, really tough Olympia. And here's the thing about this year. I'm looking at the whole year and not just the competitors placing of last year. Now, I could be totally wrong about this, and Daraja could go and win the whole Olympia for all I know. But what I have seen this year is I've seen a lot more muscle being pushed at these shows. You're seeing a lot more bubbly, a lot rounder girls um, coming into these shows. And, uh, you know, Daraja is not the biggest competitor. And there's going to be a lot of muscle this year uh, at, at the show. You're going to see, uh, you know, if you look at all the girls who are winning shows this year, they're very round, very muscular. Now, Daraja has really, really good shape, and I've yet to see if she's put on enough muscle this year to be competitive with the current standard. So that's going to be the thing. Now, when she gets – Daraja is really, really good competitor. When she gets next to some of the other top-tier competitors, the only problem that she has is her waist is a little bit wider from the front. Now, she does a really good job with those side poses. You don't really see it from the side, but in the walks is where she gets hurt. That's where she gets exposed from the other competitors who might have a smaller waistline. So the question is going to be – did Daraja put on enough size on those shoulders to offset her waist and make her shoulder to waist ratio um, look like her waist came down more and make her waist look more tapered? Is that going to be what happened? We haven't seen her in a little while, so I'm not sure of how she's looking because I haven't seen her next to anyone top tier in a little while. So that's going to be the real, the real challenge here. Now, the other thing is we've never seen Phoebe looking like this. Uh, this is the best Phoebe she's she's ever been. Now, this is obviously I have insight to this. I coach Phoebe, and this is a picture that was sent to me just yesterday. So this is her current shape. This is Daraja's shape of last year's Olympia. So she could be a lot bigger than this, and who knows? She could be beat Phoebe this weekend with a perfect score. I don't think that's going to happen. I feel like Phoebe, with the current muscle of today's standards, with the, the way that Tyler's been judging lately and pushing the muscle, I think that Phoebe is, is hitting all the lines right. You can see here, you know, everyone was wondering, is she going to nail her conditioning at this, year's, at this year's Olympia? Well, she came out to Vegas three months before the Olympia, and she's put in work to the point where she's now ahead of her prep, which is crazy. She jumped into this show, which is six days before the Olympia because she's ahead of her prep. And you can see here, her tie-ins are fully there. It's not like conditioning is going to be an issue for her. She's f full as she needs to be. She's got all the muscle that she needs to be. It's just a matter of presenting it right. Her bikini lines are there. And look at her shoulder to waist to hip ratio. Um, it, is, it is pretty insane, to be honest. So uh, the hamstrings are round and not separated. The detail of the, of the tie-ins are there. The glute fullness of the upper outer edge of the glutes there. Small waistline, V taper, wide shoulders. Everything is there. So the question really is going to be, what happens this weekend? Did Daraja do enough to put on to move up in ranking or is she bringing the same physique and potentially going down in ranking because the girls are a little bit more muscular who knows this is going to be an exciting year because we just haven't seen her at that level of competition this year so it's there's a lot to be known for this year i could be totally wrong on this i'm going to give daraja a placing of anywhere between four and nine i think with what i've been seeing that she's going to probably be in that ninth spot and with the way that I'm seeing it here, I'm thinking that Phoebe could potentially be in that eighth spot. But really, it comes down to this weekend. I think I think with Tyler judging this Texas show, um, he's going to be a judge at the Olympia show as well. Basically, what he decides six days before the Olympia is probably going to repeat at the Olympia. So is it going to go eight and nine? Is it going to go um, Daraja wins with the perfect score and actually ends up placing fourth or something at the Olympia? Very, very possible. But I think that this is how it's going to go. Now, this is also Phoebe's first Olympia. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen at, at, at this level of competition for her based on who she's beaten before in shows and based on how she's looking now and based on the amount of muscle that they're judging with. I think that is pretty it's a, going to be pretty likely that she's going to be in that top spent 10 spot towards the bottom round um, in that ninth spot. So I'm going to have her anywhere between seven and 15th place. But I think a solid number for her is going to be somewhere in that 8th or ninth, and I think that's going to happen this weekend. Me personally, based on the size demands, I would have her as that 8th and Daraja as a ninth. trying to be unbiased as possible, but obviously there's just not possible with the relationship I have with her. So Now, one of the bigger surprises this year was how this competitor was just kicking butt all over this year. She has so many wins, and I think that because a lot of the wins are overseas, people don't really know how good she's done. But she has 8 pro wins this year, so amazing amazing job by this athlete a ton of a ton of momentum going into this show and has been making improvements year over year and i think that she's going to break into the top 10 and i think that she's going to be in that seventh place uh, so 
in seventh place, I have Ivana or Ivanita, how we call her. <laughs> now, Ivana is an awesome competitor and she's been getting better year over year, show over show. Every time I see her, she's getting better. I don't know how she's going to get her waistline any smaller, but for some reason, somehow she seems to do it. She's getting rounder and fuller without crossing past that bikini amount of muscle. Now, here's the thing, and this is why I have her moving up, is she does have a lot of muscle. She's a rounder, fuller girl, and that's how they've been picking them this year. So just based on that, based on her glute tie-ins, based on her structure, based on her momentum, I do think that she's going to be getting in that seventh place spot. I have her in the top 10 as a worst placing. Um, I have her as seventh as her best placing. That's, that's where I have her. Uh, I don't see too many ways she's going to be getting past the next six in this Olympia, but her going from 16th place, which is, you know, when you get in the Olympia, just so you guys know how it works, when you get past 15th, everyone is ranked 16th place. So I actually don't know her true placing, um, but for her to go to 16th place to breaking into the top 10, I think is entirely possible. And I think it'll be quite the accomplishment, especially with how many competitors and how tough this Olympia is this year. So not a whole lot to work on for Ivana. She's kind of worked out all her things that she needs to work on. I think that she's going to be super competitive if she just brings what she did at her last show. In sixth place, I have another battle going down for fifth and sixth, which is going to be really hard to decide. And this is where I think is going to be in this spot here. Um, and now these ones, as we get higher in the ranks, you're one, you're seeing the physique level jump like crazy as the closer we get to the top. But the less accurate I think these predictions are going to be because all of these girls can be easily the next Miss Olympia. So that's that's going to be the hard part about this. Anyone in that top eight could probably be Miss Olympia without any argument. So that's why bikini is going to be so tough this year. Remember, it's not about the leanest, most symmetrical, most muscular girl. It is a total package thing, and there's going to be a lot of girls with some amazing total packages. So this can be either of these two. But I have them both pulled up here because I think that they can flop, uh, flip flop spots uh, between this fifth and sixth place. Now, both of these girls are former Miss Bikini Olympia. So who I have in sixth and in fifth place is none other than Janet Leug and Issa Piscini. Okay, so a lot of people are going to be like, wow, you have them that low, right? Well, here's the thing. Last year, you know, Issa didn't bring her best package and she slipped, um, she slipped out of the, the top four, right? So with Issa coming down in her placing, but actually making improvements this year, we're not really sure where she's going to be. And we're also not sure what Issa is going to show up. That's the problem that we've had with Issa is sometimes she's spot on, dead money, no one can touch her. And then the next time she's fifth place, right? So it's it's the consistency is what we've been missing from Issa. We haven't had the consistency. We've had some years where her legs are a little bit too muscular, a little bit too, little bit softer, where her tie-ins really aren't showing up. And that's going to be one of the things that's really been when hurting Issa, you know, when she won her Bikini Olympia, the tie-in demands weren't so great. You know, when she won that Olympia, her, the, the tie-ins weren't such a thing like they are now. Now we're getting to the point where the tie-ins are pretty much almost etched in tie-ins. They're full tie-ins almost etched in this year as things have been progressing. So it's it's her physique still has to mold into that. And that's the one lagging area I think is why it's going to have her placing a little lower when they turn them around, when they face the back. I think it's going to have her coming a little lower when you see everyone with really close to etched tie-ins and her still being just a little bit off. From the front, I don't think Issa's really going to be beatable. I honestly think that she'll probably have the best front pose in the top five of the Olympia, top six of the Olympia. But from the back, I think if you take the top 10 and you look at the tie-ins on the top 10, she'll probably be 10th place out of that top 10 at the Olympia from the back. But from the front, she's going to be first, right? So that's going to be the thing with Issa. It's going to be, where do you play someone who's so dominant from the front, but is lacking so much out of the top 10 from the back? And did she bring enough this year to actually have those tie-ins that really do show up for her to take a crown again? That would be an amazing thing to see. And actually, I hope I do see that. Now, with Janet, we don't have a whole lot of data to go off of this year, but the thing is, she took a year off. Is she coming back with more muscle? Has she kept up with the demands of the muscle that's needed for a bikini? Now, going into Janet. Okay, so why do I have Janet placing so low when she's technically never lost the Olympia? Well, we haven't seen much of Janet, and I just don't know how much how muscular she's going to be and if she's kept up with the bikini demands from the last year. Remember, the, the girls have gotten leaner. They've gotten more muscular over the last year. When you look at how Jennifer, how Jennifer looked when she won, the girls who have won every show since then have not looked like that. They've gotten a little harder. They've been a little bit more muscular. I don't know if necessarily more muscular, but definitely a little bit harder, a little bit more etched in on the tie-ins. And there have been a lot more muscular since when Janet won. So has Janet kept up? Has Janet put in the work of, of getting that more muscle? I just don't know yet. And that's why I have her placing where it is. 
Now, Janet can easily walk out of this thing with a perfect score and win the Olympia, right? If she bought with enough muscle. But I don't know if her frame is that frame that can build it so quickly. So we're just not sure of what we're going to see from Janet this year. We're going to find out when she's next to the, the t tier one competitors. And I, right now I have her right now I have her edging out Issa as fifth place, and I have Issa in that sixth place spot. And these are two that are very unknowns that could very easily be the next Miss Bikini Olympia. In fourth place, and of course, I could be wrong about this one too because this Olympia is so crazy. You guys see how hard this is? It is impossible. And that's why we have this $2,500 challenge. Who's your top 10? Who's your top 10? I want to see this list. If someone gets this right, like I'm just going to feature you on the next Bikini TV for my predictions because that's pure insanity. And you only get one vote. You only get one. You can't put in 100 different combos. <laughs> so, all right, looking at the, the fourth place spot. Um, and again, this one I think could easily come in and win the Olympia on top of that. I think any of these girls in the top six can surprise everyone and win the whole Olympia. But who I have right now in fourth place, and I'm pretty confident about this one, is going to be Maureen. Maureen is an amazing competitor, beautiful flow, great lines. You know, she has that, she has a lot of muscle, but she doesn't have that, she has that pretty muscle. You know, it's not that dense, strided, grainy muscle. She can have a lot of muscle when you have that pretty round muscle. You know, if you look at it, there's not, look at the detail on it, right? There's no separation of the hamstrings. You're not seeing any striations in the, in the glutes. You're not seeing too many striations in the, in the shoulders. Um, if you looked at her while she was working out, you'd be like, damn, that girl's pretty muscular. But if you look at her on stage and in a bikini, you're like, she's just got great flow, just very pretty muscle, you know? Um, and that's the thing I like about bikini is that what you're trying to shoot for in bikini is that look, that round, bubbly, muscular look but not too muscular and someone like her she can get away with having a lot of muscle because it isn't dense and separated it doesn't have that graininess to it so she's a real threat because she's one of those ones that just has that tone to her on her physique that you really can't do anything about it's not like you can train someone to have pretty muscle like that you have to you either have it or you don't you either have your complexion and skin like that or you don't and she just kind of has that glow about her so there's just some things in a bikini you just can't really put your thumb on it she's got it right so a couple of things um, that, that she's going to be, she's, she has worked on. I've already seen it. Uh, I've seen her in person. I've seen her in all her pictures. She has put on a little bit more muscle this year. She has got her shoulders a little bit bigger. She's kept up with the demands of everything. And I think that she's going to be a really scary competitor this year. And I'm sure a lot of people are looking at her potentially even winning this whole darn thing. So right now I have her as a, as a safe bet. I have her in fourth. I'm pretty confident about that one just based on her Based on her prior placings, I think that in the next years, we could easily be calling her a Miss Bikini Olympia, uh, but I don't think this year is the year. All right, guys, here it is. My most controversial pick of the Olympia top 10. This is the one that's going to get you guys going in the comments. I can already see the comments coming. You don't know what you're talking about. She's going to win. The I get it, okay? I understand the arguments, and I do agree. She could potentially win it, right? She could potentially win it. But I'm going to go over a couple of reasons why I think that she's placing here. So who I have in third place is Laura Lee Chapados. I know, shocker, I'm wrong, crucify me, <laughs> whatever. All right, but here's the reasons that I have her in third place. So a couple of things, a couple of factors. Uh, and I've been seeing her pictures, been seeing her updates, and this is, this is why I say that. Now, first off, let's go into her off-season and how hard she trains. Laura Lee, I think, trains harder than probably... I mean, I don't think anyone can train harder than she trains in the gym in, in, in bikini. I think that she trains probably the hardest in, in bikini. I'll give her that for sure. She, she really is a workhorse. Her and Aldo over in Florida, they really do work hard. Um, they train full on like, you know, like a bodybuilder would train. She, she trains to failure all the time. She's, a, she's a, a good example of how hard you should be training if you want to accomplish these things. Now, with training that hard does come some negatives in bikini, all right? Here's the issues with that. Now, when you're in your off season, if you're living your best life and you're eating higher calories and you're training that hard, what do you think is going to happen, right? You're going to build muscle. It doesn't matter. High reps, low reps, whatever. If you're training hard, that's going to usually result in more muscle. The thing about Laura Lee, she didn't need any more muscle going into this year. She was already the most, probably the most muscular bikini competitor in the top 10. Actually, in the top 10, she was the most muscular bikini competitor, right? She had the most developed legs. She has the most density to her legs. She had a lot of detail in her legs. Um, when you look at her from the front, she does have a little bit more glute development than pretty much everyone else in, in the top 10 in bikini. She has the biggest glutes in bikini, right? Um, her legs are a little bit squared off on the bottom. There's a little bit of a balance issue from upper to lower body, and there's a little bit of a balance issue from her glutes especially. Um, her glutes would probably be the biggest, the biggest like outlier of her physique. 
So when you see her, her glutes do pop out. They are bigger than most people's in, well, they are bigger than everyone's in the top 10. So that's the thing with Laura Lee. She is so good at posing, so good with her presentation, so beautiful complexion, flow, proportions, everything. Is all that enough to overrule the legs being a little bit more developed, the upper to lower body slight imbalance, and the glutes being overpowering to her physique? It's worked really good for her every year so far, but this year might be a little different because of how hard she's been training, how her offseason was, and also not just that, but how Jennifer's looking now. Okay, so here's the thing. Before, I had Laura Lee winning pretty much this whole year I had Laura Lee winning. That's before I started seeing pictures of Jennifer Dory lately. And actually, I'm going to go into Jennifer in a second. But as Jennifer's gotten leaner, her legs have had to come down because of it, right? So she's bringing in a smaller package. So Laura Lee, I think, is going to look even bigger this year because Jennifer is going to be tighter this year and bringing more conditioning. So that's why I have I – think that, I think that Laura Lee can easily win first place. I think that the momentum is there for Laura Lee to win first place this year. I think a lot of people expect that to happen. But there's still some things – with her physique that aren't perfect, and if we're going into just a body competition, I would have her in third place. If we go into a total package thing, we talk about her posing, we talk about all those things, well, first place is definitely the argument. Now, here's the other factor that we have to take into consideration. The bikini posing criteria changed at this year's Olympia. It is no longer going to be with these one-minute, 30-second posing routines where you get to see someone like Laura Lee really stand out because, let's face it, posing routine-wise, Laura Lee is She's, she's cream of the crop. I don't think there's really anyone that's better at posing than her. I mean, you're, you reach a certain level, and that's the tier one. There's no better than that. She's definitely there. She might be the best at, at in terms of her flow and her walking and her presentation. That's gone. 45 seconds is for everyone. You get 45 seconds now, that cuts a lot of time. We're talking walk backs are done. Your walk back hold position is done. Your front back walk is done. A lot of these moves are gone. It's 45 seconds. There's going to be someone on stage to make sure that it is only 45 seconds. They're going to be telling the king petters, thank you very much once they reach those 45 seconds. So now we have to eliminate that. We have the factor of her off season and her, how hard she trains. And we have the factor of Jennifer Dory coming in a little bit tighter, making her legs smaller, which means Laura Lee's legs are going to be a little bit bigger because they're going to be probably bigger than last year. And also she's not getting any tighter than she was last year. Last year was probably as tight as she wanted to get. So a lot of factors went into this thing of me thinking that she's going to be in that third place marker. I think that she's going to be, that's going to be shown this year with those factors. So I hope I'm wrong, but that's what I'm thinking. All right, guys, now we go into the battle for first place. And if you guys know anything about bikini, you guys know who I have not mentioned yet. <laughs> so I have a I have a really hard decision with who I think is going to be one and two here. And I think it could flip-flop. And I know a lot of you are being like, what? How, how do you think she could flip-flop? You're being biased. Of course you think that because Ashley is your athlete. And, right? Okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> so, again, there's a lot of reasons for it. And I'm going to go into both of them. So, for I, who I have in number two and winning the Olympia is Jennifer Dory and Ashley Kotwalser. I think that this is going to be a one-point decision between the two of them. Honestly, I think it's going to be super, super close. Um, of course, a ton of variables in this one. I think either of these girls can go between first and sixth place. We've seen people that were tier one before Miss Olympia get pushed down as low as sixth place the, the next year. We've seen it happen. So no one is safe at the Olympia, okay? It, it, no, that No one is safe. So let's go into the factors of why I think that this is going to be closer. Now, remember, of course, yes, I coach Ashley Cutwasser, so I am a little biased. I, there's no way for me not to be. I'm doing my best to not be. But... Here's the factors that are going into this year. Okay. Ashley Kotwalser just won the Arnold UK. Ashley Kotwalser is more muscular than she was at last year's Olympia. She has been able to maintain her, her conditioning is going to be the same as last year, right? She's always been one of the more athletic, more conditioned athletes. She's been able to maintain her balance from year over year. So she's not more developed in her legs. She's not too developed. Her shoulders are a little bit bigger than they were last year. Now, let's just go ahead and look at this picture here of Ashley at the Arnold UK and at last year's Olympia. So has Ashley made improvements from last year's Olympia to the Arnold UK where she just won and got a ton of momentum on? I think that the area that, well, I know that the area that they needed her to work on was her overall shoulders, her shoulder base. Do her shoulders look bigger now 
at the Arnold than they did at last year's Olympia. I think that you could look at that pretty closely, press pause on the camera, look at her shoulders, just her shoulders and her upper body shape. Is she bigger now from her last win at the Arnold UK than she was at the Olympia? And I think the answer to that is a, is a pretty obvious yes. I don't think anyone's really going to argue that. Her shoulder base is is a little bit better. It's a little bit wider. Her lats are even a little bit better. She has a big, a, more of a more of a V taper to her frame, and I think that it's pretty obvious. You know, I think that yes, she has made improvements. So remember when we talk about her having 12 points last year and Jennifer having eight, we're talking about a very few points to separate the two of them. So what are the other factors and why I think Ashley could potentially win the Olympia for the fourth time this year? If you look at the top 10. In the conditioning, Jennifer Dory would most likely be 10th out of the top 10 in the conditioning. To be fully honest, she'd probably be the 15th in, in the top 15. She'd probably be the 15th place in terms of conditioning. Now, that's not any fault of Jennifer's prep and her not knowing what she's doing or anything like that. She won the Olympia. Okay, that means that the judges gave her advice to come in that way. Sometimes the judges like someone to have, be a little bit softer. But how many people have won? looking as soft as Jennifer did when she won the Olympia over the last year? And the answer to that is zero. No one has won as soft as Jennifer was here winning the Olympia. When you look at the legs and you look at the detail on the legs, there's just a little bit of softness. It looks like she's maybe a couple percent, one, two percent higher in body fat than everyone else who's won since then, for the most part. I would say that, I would say there's a couple that are getting kind of close, but still she would be softer than everyone that's won. Now, what does that mean? Well, uh, based on her YouTube, she said she went to Pittsburgh and the judges told her there that, you know what, she needs to come in a little bit harder at this year's Olympia. Okay, not a problem. Jennifer has shown up at the gyms. I mean, she looks insane right now. Okay, so I will say I was a little, I was looking at her a couple of months ago. I see her in the gyms all the time. You know, we're all buddies. I'm, I'm buddies with her husband, Mark, too. And I see her at the gym and I was like, okay, yeah, her shoulders, they're not that, they're not that capped off. They're not that muscular considering how close we are to the show. And then all of a sudden I saw her and I was like, what happened? <laughs> she is jacked, right? Her shoulders are bringing a whole different look this year that she hasn't brought before. Her conditioning is already better than what it was on the Olympia stage. So her reaching conditioning levels was never an issue. It's just that that's what they wanted. Now they said, come in a little bit tighter. She's answering that call. What happens when you have someone who hasn't competed for a year and you bring a whole new look? Sometimes it goes really bad. Sometimes it goes really good. So this year is going to be a year where Jennifer is untouchable, perfect score at the Olympia, or they don't like her look and she gets pushed down potentially, you know, even in that fourth place position because it's too much. It doesn't look good on her to be that tight. There's a lot of factors that go into bikini. Remember, it's a total package thing. It's not about conditioning and muscle. We don't know the variables of what's going to happen when Jennifer is tighter. We don't know if she's going to look better when she's tighter. We don't know if the judges are going to like that, but that's what, all we know is that's what they're asking for. They have a vision in their head. Jennifer's trying to accommodate that division. That that vision is it going to be for the better of her physique? That is a very interesting. That's going to be a very interesting factor. Remember, she's also had a whole what 13, 14, 13 months off since the last Olympia, so we don't know what she's going to bring now. Historically speaking, when you look at Jennifer, when she comes back from a show, she hasn't done the best at that first show. She kills it at that second show. But that first show, remember a couple years ago, the year she won the Olympia, she lost to Tampa Pro and she plays lower than Daraja and Laura Lee, right? So that was her first show back from uh, the year prior. So this is her first show back now from winning the Olympia. So is she going to be better? Is there something that's just a little bit off that first show for her that she gets off? Or was it just her condition that she needed to catch up on from that first show to her second show? This year, one thing's for sure, looking at how she's looking in the gym and how she's posting her pictures and stuff, conditioning is not going to be a factor. I think the factor is going to be, do the judges like her that way? So a lot of variables into that, and that's why I can't give her a clean sweep. Looking at the balance issues that we talked about with Laura Lee, that they might be a little bit more this year, looking at how her legs might really be obviously bigger since, since Je Jennifer's going to be bringing smaller, more conditioned legs, um, is, is why I have her in third and why I have, uh, looking at Ashley's, muscle, how she's been able to gain more muscle and still be a very balanced physique and coming off the momentum of winning the Arnold UK is how I have these two as a toss up. Okay. Now here's the thing. When I post this, I have to pick a one and two on these two athletes. I'm not going to put the pressure on Ashley to say she's in first or in second place. I see Jennifer at the gym all day long, <laughs> all the time. I'm not going to say first or second. 
I'll let you guys decide who you think is going to win this one first and second. That's the one I'm going to back away from. I don't want to get in trouble on Monday. <laughs> but as you can see my arguments, I think you guys can know what direction I'm leaning in for this one. But that's who I have in the top 10. I could be totally wrong. I think that both of these competitors, I think that Jennifer could be anywhere between one and four position. And I think that Ashley could be anywhere between one and maybe even six or seven position. It's going to be it, the Olympia this year. Just getting a first call out, I think anyone should be happy about. Even if you're, even if you're Jennifer, even if you're three-time Miss Bikini Olympia Ashley, I think if you get a first call out, you're a you're a you're a crazy good competitor, and you need to be happy with that. This year is gonna be crazy. So leave those top ten predictions in the comment section below. I will pay twenty five hundred dollars for anyone who gets it. Now here's the rules: you gotta leave the comment obviously before the Olympia happens. We'll say you gotta leave it. Three days before the Olympia happens in the comment section. Perfect one through 10. Nine out of 10 doesn't count. So am I completely crazy and my picks are all over the place and they're completely wrong? Maybe. <laughs> you guys let me know in the comments. I'll talk to you guys later.